Hello, my name is Marcus T. Anthony. Welcome to the 5 Minute Mystic. And uh, by all means, please send me your questions. And you'll see the, uh, my email address right across here, right now. And uh, I'll answer your questions about the nature of modern mysticism. Anything that you have um, about uh, some distinctions about mind, spirituality, the future, the law of attraction, all these kind of things, please send it to me and I'll be happy to help you. Now today's question comes from Shweta. And Shweta has this very significant question. And this is something many people are wanting to know. So I think you'll find the answer very relevant. Shweta says this. I want to know my future. Can you please tell me how can I do that? Her words? Okay, Shweta. Now as a mystic, of course, I can see into the future. So I'm just going to tune in here. I got it. I got it, Shweta. I see you. I see you being fired from your job because you can't spell. Uh, all the rest of it's foggy. Sorry about that, Shreda. Okay, just kidding. Okay, I'm going to be serious now for the rest of this video. I promise. Now, can we, the first question is, can, is it actually possible to see into the future? Or is time simply linear? Now, my answer, and some people would disagree with this, is yes, you can sense the future. And you can sense the future... Um, through feelings, but also through images and dream states. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of tools that can uh, help you tap into the into the future. Okay. Um, there's a distinction though uh, that should also be made at this particular point, right at the beginning of the video, and that is that I don't believe the future is entirely set, but I do believe that some things have a kind of momentum behind them or an energy, so they're very difficult to change. And there are possible futures that are made known to us through, uh, through the mind and through intuition. Okay. So you can tap into those. Um, and this is quite common through all cultures, if you think about it. I mean, people often say, oh, I had a feeling that the team was going to lose today. Well, I had a feeling not to trust that guy. Uh, so it's implicit in society that people feel that they can sense the future. And it's the same in many cultures. You know, when I lived in China, for example, uh, people would use the same thing, you know. Why do you add a taboha to go nana and why? I don't feel that guy is good, I think he's a bad person. And um, they may be talking about the intuitive sense. And they would say the same things about possible futures as well. Um, they were saying in Hong Kong and Cantonese, I feel this and that will happen. Um, so it's common through cultures. Uh, now, is there any evidence for this? Well, there's a pretty strong anecdotal evidence for it, of course. Lots of people will say, I had a feeling, I had a dream, and it would come true. Um, I believe that many times that this is quite... Uh, people are actually tapping into, into the future. It's not just a simple case of people remember the things that... or the dreams or the images or the feelings that come true, and then they ignore all the ones that don't. Some, some dreams and images are just too specific to ignore or to, to dismiss in that way. Now here's one that I had, and I wrote about this in, uh, in one of my books. Okay. This dream I had in April 2013, okay, uh, early in the morning, and, and you'll see it written up here. So, this is what I wrote on my mobile phone, because I got up in the middle of the night, and I wrote this dream down, because it was, uh, I thought it was very, there was something very powerful about this dream. Okay. And it's about the, the mystic Stuart Wilde, and Stuart Wilde, um, has been one of the greatest uh, influences on my own spiritual journey, especially in the early stages. So here's the dream. I'm like this. I'm looking in from a railway station at a pub across the road. It says Stuart Wild Pub on the sign. So it's an old English pub and there's a sign on it hanging down. Then I look closer and see that it says Stu Dead. So these words are written under the sign. I feel great sadness. Then I hear someone say, is it true? A little boy's voice returns. Yes, he had a heart attack. I keep hearing the song. She's out of my life. You know that old Michael Jackson song. It's very sad. Of course, Michael sang it better than I can. Then I hear another voice. And this is Stuart Wilde speaking. And he said, um, I'd like to thank her. And I've got a sense that that was about his mother. Okay, It's like he's moved on from life and he's looking back. Next I'm hearing are words from a cold chisel song, Flame Trees. People who aren't from Australia, probably, Australia or New Zealand probably won't know this song. 
And the words from this song go something like, There's no change, there's no pace, Everything within its place just makes it harder to believe that she won't be around. Again, they sing it better than me, but that's how the song goes. Um, that song is actually about going back to an old town and finding that every, even though the similar things are there, there's something that's gone or dead. It's the, it's the person's youth that's gone. So it's about change and about death, really. And the death of the past, the passing of um, the past, to use that circularity. So the whole thing, there's a sense of, um, of sadness and emptiness, like after someone dies or leaves. Now, eight days after that dream, on May, May 1st, 2013, Stuart Wilde died of a heart attack. So it, it came true. And I think in that dream I was tapping into a strong sense of the future. When you're attached to something, you have a strong emotional attachment to it. They're the kind of things that activate intuitive, what I call integrated intelligence. Okay. Um, so when something's meaningful or it has a strong emotional attachment, they're the things that really activate intuitive intelligence. This has been shown through science as well, through parapsychology research. And now, if you don't believe all the anecdotal evidence, you can go and do some of your own research into um, pre-sentience, the feeling of the future, precognition, that, that usually means images or knowledge of the future that comes to us. For example, read, read uh, Dean Radin's book, Supernormal. It's got a chapter, chapter 9, I think it is, um, which is about all the science of precognition. And it's a, it's a pretty strong science, I think. You can decide for yourself. Um, for me, I know from uh, many, many dreams and many, uh, many occasions where I've tapped into possible futures that uh, the future can be sensed. Okay, so let's look at two tools. These are two ways that can help you sense the future. And the first one is um, the intuitive sense of what I call the feeling sense. So you're tapping into the feelings, your intuitive feelings. And now, um, tapping into your feelings is one of the most important ways for you to activate intuitive intelligence. Many people lose this capacity through modern education, which puts um, you know, your, your mentality too much in the head. So you need to rediscover a connection with your body to, to do this. You can find out these tools in my book, Discover Your, your Soul Template, by the way. I can't go into details about them here because we only have a few minutes. So, um, to tap into the feeling sense, you, here's one way you can do it, okay? There's more than one way. But you can relax, empty your mind, and uh, you can connect with your chest. This is what I, what I like to do. Connect with your chest because that takes you out of the head and feel the energy in your chest and then project that feeling out into a possible future. So if you're thinking of taking a job, is this a good job for me? Um, do I, will I be successful at this job? Imagine that feeling going out into that workplace and then pull the energy back into your chest. What kind of feeling comes into you? Into your, into your chest and honor that feeling. Okay. And another way to, to do this is to specify um, or to use images more specifically or a dream state. So you really relax. You put yourself into a very drowsy state. Okay. Through meditation. And uh, we can also do this just when you wake up in the morning or just before you go to sleep. Because during a drow that, that drowsy or hypnagogic state, um, dream images uh, come into your and dream uh, uh, auditory prompts like words and, and, and songs, those kind of things come into your mind more easily. So in that relaxed, drowsy state, you can also do a similar thing. Okay, deliberately project your, yourself into that possible future. Okay, so here I am with that man that I want to ask out on a date. How does it feel? Okay, and then pull the feelings back into you. What strong feelings or what images come to you? Because if you're in a drowsy state, you'll also get, tend to get images and, and words coming into your mind. Now, after you've finished doing, doing that meditative state, wake up and write it down. Because that will help you uh, make a stronger connection between the conscious mind and the deeper subconscious mind. Okay, so write it down. Okay, and then um, take action. Okay, so if you've got a very strong positive or negative feeling, you know, take action on that. Um, if there's no strong positive or negative feeling, you can, you can go either way. Or just leave it or wait and try again later. Or go and find out some more information about the, the decision you're trying to make. Because uh, 
there's no reason why you can't mix and, um, mix and match rational and, and intuitive knowledge together. That's what I do in my life. Okay, now here's a, a distinction that you should, um, that I recommend for all people doing this kind of thing. Before you um, tap into your intuition, okay, release all expectation, desire, and release the past. Bring yourself into presence and into silence, okay? Because if you put your own expectation about the possible future, your own excitement or your own fear into it, it's going to contamin contaminate the intuition. And I've done that plenty of times myself. You know, um, for example, not that long ago I was um, looking to get a, quite a good job that I was really excited about, and I allowed my, that excitement to distort my, um, my intuition about job. I never got a job. I really thought that I would. Um, so if you put your own feelings and excitement and fear into a possible future, you'll tend to contaminate. And you won't get, uh, you won't get the natural, innate feeling or energy of the actual event. You'll be imposing or projecting something onto it. Okay. Now, just before we leave, one last thing. I highly recommend that you ground yourself in presence. Okay. Don't spend too much of your time uh, say catering to the mind's desire to know everything in the future, okay? Because that's really coming from the mind. The mind tends not to trust. Um, no matter what happens in the future, whether you get what you want, if you don't develop the capacity to bring yourself into presence and to be here and to live with joy in the moment, then even when you achieve that, that possible future, you won't have the, the capacity to, to enjoy it. So make sure that you um, engage in the transformative process of being present in the moment. It's the most beautiful and transformative thing that you can, you can do. All of us want to know the future, but much of the time it's just the mind's distrust of life and wanting guarantee, wanting to control the future, wanting to impose itself on life. There's, there's a kind of surrender inherent in, the, in a genuine spiritual journey. And uh, a constant desire to know the future actually prevents that awakening process to occur. So that's something to keep in mind. That's all for today's 5-Minute Mystic. Glad you could be with me. See you next time.